Nuno Paul, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Uh, we are in the midst of um, a massive ramp up of cannabis retail, not just in Ontario, but around the country. Um, you are general contractors and project managers at uh, EN2. What has this meant for your business? And like, is it just like drinking from a fire hose? <laughs> yeah, uh, I think it will get to that point eventually soon. But right now we've kind of had our good fair share. Um, of what we've been doing in the cannabis space. It's definitely been a ride, especially last year in 2020. Yeah, and talk a little bit about that. So um, I guess you could talk about the types of stores you're building or who you're building them for, but talk about sort of the pace and the sort of level you need to build them to because it's not just like, I don't know, building the wall that's behind me. Like there are requirements above and beyond building a wall in the basement. Talk a little bit about that and sort of who you're working for and how it's going. Yeah, for sure. So we had um, one of our clients who we're doing a lot of restaurants for, uh, the Donnie Group, and they kind of shifted gears a little bit. They saw kind of what was happening in, in sort of the market. Uh, it was definitely a really good pivot for them. They decided, you know what, guys, we're going to hold off on restaurants for a bit. We're going to go into the cannabis world. And so, uh, yeah, I think it was end of 2019. They already showed us uh, locations of where they wanted to be. We kind of jumped right in with them and kind of taken the same practice we did of building out their restaurants kind of into the cannabis space, and it kind of worked really well. So from there, you know, obviously learning pretty quickly on, in terms of what the regulations are, how do you build these stores, uh, what are required to get these stores built, and then timeline, like you said. I mean, uh, we build these things pretty quickly outside of cannabis, so to get into cannabis, it kind of fit well with what our sort of uh, portfolio of other projects kind of in mind with. So uh, getting the first one done early on in 2020, kind of learned pretty quickly about pre-inspections, what, what, what's required for pre-inspection in terms of, you know, um, secured area facilities, the cameras, all that sort of thing. Um, and then from there, it's just kind of been a rollout with that client and kind of building out their Ontario locations. Um, so we've done quite well in the, in the last year. And to, to be frank, it's really what's kind of kept us afloat uh, outside of other projects that we had with other of our larger clients. Um, yeah, it's definitely kept us busy and kept us moving forward for sure. Yeah, and, and just to, to people who are watching that may not be as tuned in with sort of what the Donnelly Group is, it's, it's, it was Hobo and now it's Dutch Love on a major expansion in Ontario. If you live in downtown Toronto, you absolutely see them, Ottawa as well. Um, it, is a, it is a private company on the move on really a growth pattern. But as you said, like experience, uh, not only in restaurants, but also barbershops and now cannabis retail. And I think I've really done an unbelievable job identifying locations, getting the store up and running, getting the licenses, getting open, which is all those things have to happen on parallel tracks. And certainly having a, a general contractor and someone to sort of project manage it uh, like you guys do is absolutely essential. I, I guess my question is, we are in the midst of 960 new stores potentially opening up in Ontario in 2021. If you are one of those licensees, what would you be thinking about if you had to like redo the interior of a store and a build out like what do you think they ought to be thinking about as an expert i think uh, ideally it's it's all about location i think with any sort of business you get into it's about location 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 but with cannabis there are certain key things that we sort of noticed that have done done really well for for our clients um you know being whether parking uh whether being butting up establishments next to them and what those establishments are and what drives that uh clients to them um so it there's a lot of different factors i think but from the inside thing and things. I think we're looking at, you know, what does the HVAC system look like? You know, what's currently there that needs to be demolished that could cause sort of headaches or add to your budget uh, that's not really foreseen. You know, we've seen a lot of places where the flooring is really, really bad shape. You know, having a level of floor in a location just adds a lot to the budget. Uh, doing an HVAC system that was, you know, not necessarily designed for, for uh, cannabis retail. I mean, you don't really have to have a crazy HVAC system, but something that at least can carry um, the smells from back to fore, uh, front of the house, the back of the house, all those things are super important. So those are things we look at right away for, for clients. I mean, you could imagine we're getting calls now quite a bit from new clients that are coming to us, some with, you know, some massive real, uh, rollout potential in the near future. Other ones are trying to get their feet wet and see what this is all about with one or two stores. And so we like to tell them, I mean, like, get us in early if you can. If you want to work with us, get us in in the beginning when you're looking for a location, send some pictures and get us to just do a quick assessment of what we think, you know, high level, what we think could be some problem areas that you need to sort of address that could sh that should be added to the budget when you're creating that moving forward. So typically we like to call ourselves and we say it all the time here at the office, we get sick, but it's their construction arm. 
And so the way we see it is focus on what you want to do with this business, whether it's just one or two stores or whether it's 30, 40, 50 stores. And so what you should be focusing on is location, getting the licenses in place, worrying about all the design features and let us really build out the stores for you. So we give you a key and you basically just come in and sort of run it. So it takes a lot of pressure off owners when they realize that they don't have to worry about hiring trades, managing the trades, or just getting, you know, a couple of people in to sort of help them out. We kind of just take that all from their plate. And that's what they, I think they really like about um, our process here at EN2. And I think that's one of the reasons why we're seeing a lot more calls sort of coming in and that sort of system just kind of working with more clients. Yeah, I mean, it must be a relief to work with someone who's done it before, can do it really well, is there from the get-go. That must be sort of a huge relief for folks that you're working with. And I have to ask because, again, 960 coming up, but it's more than just that because some of those 960 thought they had a six or eight or nine month horizon. And now it's like three, four and a half or six month horizon. Like the time horizons, while it's great that we're opening up more stores in Ontario, that means the time horizon for people in the queue potentially has been sort of scrunched. Like, how are you seeing that? Like, is it, I mean, aside from panic calls from would-be retailers wanting to open, like, how do you sort of say, okay, like take a deep breath. Here's going to be the timeline. Here's going to be the budget. Now let's get going. Like, are you seeing those panic type calls now? All the time. And I think that happened, like you were saying last year, when it was a six to eight month window, all of a sudden becomes we're opening in two weeks. And it's sort of how do you shift your manpower to sort of accommodate for that? So we could be working on four or five stores and it's just who can we pull off these stores to make sure that that location can open in two weeks. So for us, it's been about coordination. That's all it is here in the office. We have our dedicated project manager to the site or sites. And so they don't know exactly where millwork is coming, what time everything is coming in at the floor in the HVAC. And it's, if we can coordinate all that, it's easy for us to pluck guys from certain sites to put them into dedicated places uh, to get those locations done. So we pride ourselves on never missing dates. Um, that's one of the biggest things for us here at the company is sort of when's the pre-inspection we ask right away. So we know if we can get the people out there. Uh, and then when is that date sort of happening that you potentially want to open and get inspected and have um, your opening day. So those are key things for us that we put on the schedule. And so far it's worked really well. I mean, our business is sort of scalable in the sense that you'll have our tech people here in the office that are kind of like the full time. So we have our admin people, we have our project managers, we have business development. Um, but then we can also wrap up pretty quickly. So if it comes to, you know, having 20 stores on the go, it's a matter of just scaling up through our trades. So we have tens, almost hundreds of trades that we can deal with that have worked with us. And so it's those key specific trades that we can call upon to say, all right, we need an electrician here on this date, then move him onto that site, then bring in the drywaller, then do the floor here, millworks coordinated there. So it does seem quite, quite confusing uh, and a little bit uh, over the top sometimes, but if we're properly coordinated, we, that's why we, we're good. We haven't missed anything. It's just about have, making sure the guys know what's coming up and for us it's about communication so we're in talks with their clients on a daily basis and budgets are very important for us so we maintain and track their budgets throughout so there's always that level of communication with them uh, on an ongoing basis so we get that call you know at eight o'clock in the morning look we just got the email that date's been pushed up what can we do and so it's kind of just like give us a couple hours we'll rearrange some guys we'll have make sure that that date is set so we're excited about the future i mean even though we're getting a lot of calls and we're waiting for uh through this lockdown, I think now everybody's sort of like, it's like that springboard effect. Everybody's like really pushing right now, but eventually it's just gonna take off. So we, we really appreciate the calls that we've had to date because we're able to at least set ourselves up with them from the beginning to know what's gonna happen in the near future. At least it gives us a, a good sort of runway um, where we need to be sort of for the, you know, the next two, three months when I think, you know, everyone says two, three months has been like when this is gonna be over, but who knows really, but we think in the next, two, three months, we'll really see a huge spike in uh, new projects starting all across Ontario. So uh, we're setting up teams all across, uh, all the way down Niagara, we're up to Ottawa. Um, we're just everywhere right now with different locations. And uh, that's what we want. And, and outside of Ontario, we're already speaking with teams in, uh, in Alberta, Saskatchewan, Quebec, and creating those hubs where if we have a client that's in Ontario that wants to build you know, 80 stores across Canada, we already have the teams set up in those provinces. And for us, it's like, look at us as, again, your construction arm. So there's no point of contact with different provinces. It's E and two, and we let you know what's actually happening within 
the different provinces and the, the buildouts. Yeah, I, I, I'm not a retailer. I don't have a store. I'm not getting an RSA that has like a date for an inspection, but I feel better already talking to you that I know that people are relying on you and the, and the team there to actually make it seamless, do it well, do it on time, do it on budget. Because as you're saying, like taking some huge chunk off of like a retail owner's plate, even if it's a group, like taking it off their plate just must be a huge relief. So then they can focus on how am I going to build a brand? How am I going to actually get products to people? How am I going to hire staff? How am I going to train them? How am I going to be compliant? Like there's so much else that they may understand really well, but they may not understand the construction part. And that's why you guys, I think are, are really excelling in this, but also you've done it before. And I think going with people who've done it before, especially as you face these critical timelines, especially as you know, you, 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 there's so much uncertainty, get as much certainty as certain, and then move on to the rest. It's such a new uh, industry, really, in the last couple of years, how it's kind of taken off. And from the lottery perspective to then just getting your RSA and ROL, everything's changing. And for us, being at the forefront of that and learning and hearing from our clients what's going on just allows us to really take that knowledge and build it into what we're doing already with the clients. So that way we can continue building these things quick. Our, our biggest challenge is we do not want to have any delays on the store for an unforeseen issue that we have brought. Typically what will happen, and not just in cannabis, but most construction projects is a client will come in and say, well, we don't want the bar there, or we decided we're moving this, right? So for us, it's okay because we're not set to certain deadlines that we're gonna get inspected by the ABCO. But those are things that we're always trying to sort of avoid. And so a, a great quality interior package is really key for us, uh, making sure we have the right trades in place, uh, and then just guideline by us. Just if it's if they can be run by us and our team, we feel super confident that uh, we can execute any project in any location. You know, we have guys uh, driving, coming back from Ottawa. You know, this past weekend, looking at a couple stores out there, and it's just a matter of setting up the right team and and pushing forward. So we're excited. I mean, it's 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 one of those industries where uh, I find you have GCs that are really good at hotels, right? So that's what their focus on is and hotel building and you have other ones that are really good at uh let's say grocery stores so for us if we can build that niche in the in the cannabis market where we see that it's going to be a huge growth potential for the next few years we like that and, and not just on the retail side but also on the production side if we can get into the micro grows and that sort of thing that we're talking to some clients right now and anything to do with that cannabis we want to make sure that we understand what the regulations are for it and then apply that knowledge into what we're doing uh, from a construction aspect I, I love it. I want everybody to call you yeah. <laughs> one because I think it'll, it'll feel better uh, for them. But also, again, it's like clearing off part of the plate to the really critical part to getting open, hand it off to Nuno and the team, and then yeah. be done with it and then get on with the rest of it. Nuno, Paul, I really appreciate um, the partnership, but also uh, you sharing expertise and thoughts about how it's going. Uh, and we'll connect with you down the road because I, I think it'll be interesting to sort of test, take the temperature as we go through this really um challenging year on the COVID side, but also exciting year on the ramp up of retail. We really appreciate your time and expertise. Yeah, no, thank you for your time. This was fun.